Dear students, we will be discussing photoelectric effect in our quantum mechanics unit in the subject of applied physics. What is photoelectric effect? The emission of electrons from a metal plate when illuminated by light or any other radiation of suitable wavelength is called photoelectric effect. The emitted electrons are called as photoelectrons. This phenomena was first discovered by Heinrich Hertz when he allowed the ultraviolet radiation to fall on the zinc metal plate. The phenomena of photoelectric emission was experimentally verified by many other scientists like Halwakas, Linard, J. Thompson and R. A. Milken. It was discovered that alkali metals like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium eject electrons when exposed to visible radiation of different frequencies. This was found out by R. A. Milliken for which he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1923. Let us simply understand the concept here. A metal surface when exposed to visible radiation, the electrons are ejected from the metal surface. This is what we call it as photoelectric emission. The experimental setup essentially consists of two photosensitive metal surfaces A and B enclosed in an evacuated quartz tube. Plate A is connected to the negative terminal of the potential divider while plate B is connected to the positive terminal through a galvanometer or a microammeter that is A here. In the absence of any light there is no flow of current and hence there is no deflection in the microammeter. But when monochromatic light is made to fall on plate A current starts flowing in the circuit which is indicated by the galvanometer or the microammeter. The current is known as photocurrent. This shows that when light falls on a particular metal surface, electrons are ejected. The number of electrons ejected and their kinetic energy would be depending on the following factors. The first one is the potential difference between the plates A and B. The second parameter is the intensity of the incident radiation. Third parameter being the frequency of incident radiation. And fourth one is the type of photometal. Let us first see the effect of potential difference. For a given photometal, keeping the intensity and frequency of the incident radiation fixed, the variation of the potential difference between plates A and B with photocurrent is as shown in figure. When the positive terminal potential of plate B is increased, the photoelectric current also increases and reaches certain maximum value. This value of current is what we call it as saturation current. Further increase in the potential hardly produces any change in the value of current. If the potential is kept zero, it was observed that the photoelectric current still flows in the same direction. This shows that the incident radiation not only provides a conducting path, but in addition an electromagnetic force to the photoelectrons to move through. But if the potential is reversed, that means it is applied in the opposite direction, the photocurrent does not immediately drop to zero. And still flows in the same direction. As the retarding potential that is the potential applied in opposite direction is increased further for a particular value of the applied potential or the retarding potential the photocurrent becomes zero. This particular value of potential is what we term it as stopping potential. The second factor being the effect of intensity of instant radiation. The variation of photocurrent as a function of potential difference between the two plates for different intensities keeping the frequency constant would show like this. Now as you can see here as the intensity increases the saturation current also increases in proportion. Higher the intensity higher the saturation current. That shows the saturation current is proportional to the intensity of incident radiation. Higher the intensity of radiation, higher the saturation current. This particular change in the saturation current is in proportion with the intensity. However, you might have observed another point here that whatever may be the value of the intensity, irrespective of it, the stopping potential being the same. That means the stopping potential is independent of the intensity of incident radiation. The third parameter being the effect of frequency of incident radiation. Now this is a graph that is drawn between the voltage to that of the photocurrent for a given photometal keeping its 
intensity and frequency fixed now for the same graph so for different frequencies would show a variation like this so this is for a particular frequency say nu1 the second one is for nu2 the third one is for nu3 and so on on this particular axis such that nu1 is less than nu2 is less than nu3 what is the inference of this particular concept here now higher the value of the frequency higher the value of the stopping potential that means the stopping potential is no more a constant as the frequency increases the stopping potential also increases which can be seen by means of this particular graph here now this graph shows a linear variation between the stopping potential and the frequency of incident radiation now this particular line so would be intersecting the x axis at a particular point of the value of nu not so what we call it as a threshold frequency the threshold frequency is the frequency at which the stopping potential is zero what is the other way of understanding this one the threshold frequency is the minimum frequency of the incident radiation for which the photoelectric emission can be caused so below this frequency there is no possibility of photoelectric emission however intense the incident radiation being but so from this frequency only the photoelectrons would eject and start flowing in. but this is the frequency that is just able to liberate electrons without giving them additional energy and if you increase the frequency above this particular frequency the electrons gain more and more energies so that they can flow from plate a to plate b the next one being the effect of photometal now when you observe the graph between the stopping potential and the frequency so it would be a straight line and for different photometals the straight lines would have the same slope so you can observe for different particular photometals like potassium sodium zinc tungsten and platinum so all these would be having the similar um, slope a uh, same slope and their intersection points with the frequency axis are different that shows the stopping potential would be different so that means we conclude that the threshold frequency is a function of photometal that is it depends on the nature of the photometal the fundamental laws of the photoelectric emission first of which is the number of electrons emitted per second that is the photoelectric current that is, is proportional to the intensity of incident light now when we see in light is made to fall on the metal plate it would eject electrons when the frequency of the incident radiation is above the the uh, threshold frequency for low intensity of the given light the few electrons only ejected giving rise to a very small current if the intensity is more then more number of electrons are ejected from the metal surface flowing from one end to the other end giving rise to even a higher current now for a given photometal there exists certain minimum frequency of the incident radiation known as threshold frequency so that the photoelectrons can be emitted from the metal surface now if the frequency of the incident radiation is less than that this frequency then no electrons can be emitted from the metal surface however intense the in incident radiation may be another fundamental law of photoelectric emission is the maximum velocity or kinetic energy of the photoelectron depends on the frequency of radiation but not on intensity the kinetic energy of photoelectrons increase with increase in the frequency of incident radiation so when light falls as the frequency is more than that of the threshold frequency more and more increase in the frequency causes more and more electrons to have higher velocities and thus have higher kinetic energies the other fundamental laws of photoelectric emission are the rate at which electrons are emitted from a photocathode is independent of its temperature this shows that the photoelectric phenomenon is completely different from that of thermionic emission 
The electron emission from the photosensitive metal surface is almost instantaneous. That means the lag between the emission of the electrons and the incidence of radiation would be somewhere of the order of 10 power minus 8 second. For a given photometal surface, we know that the stopping potential is directly proportional to the, intent, the frequency of the in, uh, incident radiation. Einstein's photoelectric equation. According to Einstein, when the radiation falls on the metal surface, the photon of the radiation is completely absorbed by the electron of the metal. And this particular energy, what we term it as quantum energy, is utilized in two ways. A part of its energy is used to free the electron from the atom and take it to the metal surface. And this energy is known as photoelectric work function. And it is denoted by W0. The other part is used to impart kinetic energy to the electron, which is equal to half mv square. Now this equation now can be written as H nu is equal to W0 plus half mv square, where H nu is nothing but the energy of the photon absorbed by the electron, W0 is the work function and half mv square is the kinetic energy of the electron. Now this can be further written as H nu is equal to H nu0 plus half mv square, where W0 is equal to H nu0 and nu0 is known as the threshold frequency. Let us understand this in a clear manner. When we have a metal surface on which a photon falls and absorbed by the metal surface, an electron would be ejected onto the surface of the metal. This is possible when the energy of the photon is just sufficient to elicit an electron to the metal surface. If that happens, the energy of the photon H nu is equal to W0, what we call it as photoelectric work function. Now, if the energy of the photon is very much greater than that of the energy that is just used to elicit an electron from the metal surface, that is H nu naught is greater than W naught, then this is utilized as the kinetic energy of the electron. So now you can write H nu, that means the energy of the photon, incident photon, is equal to w naught the photoelectric work function and then half mv square which is the kinetic energy of the electron so we can consider the photon energy being utilized to elicit an electron that is nothing but the work function to the surface of the metal and to impart kinetic energy to the electron this electron would be moving with maximum velocity acquiring this kinetic energy from the photon Now, if the photon energy is just enough to bring the electron uh, only onto the surface of the metal, then our equation would reduce to H nu naught is equal to W naught because the kinetic energy of the electron would be now equal to 0. This nu naught is what we term it as threshold frequency. So, this threshold frequency is the minimum frequency that can liberate an electron from the metal surface. Now similarly, you can have the threshold wavelength as well by means of this relation. We have C is equal to nu naught into lambda naught. We can write lambda naught as C by nu naught or nu naught as C by lambda naught. So I would write nu naught is equal to C by lambda naught. In that case, you would write H C by lambda naught is equal to W naught. This is work function. Now you can have lambda naught, so which is the threshold wavelength would be equal to hc by w0. If this w0 is expressed in Ev, the value would be 12400 by w0 in Ev, where w0 is the photoelectric work function. Now, this value of lambda0 would come in angstrom unit. We know that one angstrom is equal to 10 power minus 10 meters. Now, let us examine for one particular metal, the same case. Now, when you see so different metals with their work functions given electron volt, so let us suppose for sodium the value as given as 2.27. Now, you can calculate the corresponding threshold wavelength for sodium, so which would be lambda naught is equal to 
W0 HC by W0. So we already come across this particular equation. So W0 is 2.27 anyway in EV. So therefore it would be 12,400 by 2.27 in angstrom unit. This value would come as 5,462 in angstrom unit to the approximation. This particular value of wavelength would be falling in the visible region in green color somewhere near this. You can calculate the threshold wavelength for any given metal provided you have got the work function value of that particular metal by means of the same formula. As an example, you can see that the red color photon which would be having its threshold wavelength as 700 nanometers or 7000 angstrom units so would be coming out only when a photon of 1.77 eV is swallowed by the electron of the potassium metal whose value of work function is around 2 eV. Similarly, the same potassium metal can elicit an electron so to uh, come in green color so the value of uh, the photon energy would be 2.25 and so on and you can even calculate the maximum velocity of the electron provided you have the value of the work function so how, how do we do it so we can have half mb square so which is the kinetic energy as a value equal to h nu minus w naught where h nu is the photon energy w0 is the work function from suppose since the w0 is constant you can say v square the square of the velocity of the maximum velocity of the electron is proportional to nu in other words v max the maximum velocity is proportional to root of the frequency so if you have a photon falling with the incident frequency nu making an electron from the metal surface to come out and move around with some velocity say v that v, v or v max would be proportional to the square root of that particular frequency. Now where this particular e the equation or the concept is would be useful. So in fact it is useful in constructing a photoelectric cell. The photoelectric cell works under the principle of the photoelectric emission as predicted by Einstein. It would be consisting of a photometal surface on which light is incident and the current flows through the circuit and this particular current gives rise to a potential difference which can be stored in a capacitor. So this is nothing but a photoelectric cell. So this is the best application that we can have from photoelectric effect.